Oh, man. Oh, man. We back. We back again with episode two, y'all. This is episode two of the Say Yes podcast. If you haven't seen episode one, I say definitely go check out episode one, y'all. Episode one was, it was lit, okay? It was lit. God was definitely speaking through me in that episode. And I just pray that God speak through me in this episode too. Actually, speaking of praying, I did not pray before starting this video. So let's go ahead and pray together. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Heavenly Father, Lord, just truly thank you, Lord, for this day, Father God. Just thank you for everything, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you just use me today, Father God. Use me to be able to reach people that needs to be reached, Father God. I pray that people take this word, Father God, and they don't just listen to the word, but they apply the word, Father God. Same thing with me, Lord. I don't want to just listen to it, but I want to apply it, Father God. I ask that you have your way doing your ministry, Lord. This is your ministry, not mine. I'm just a vessel being used, Lord, for your kingdom, Lord. So, Father God, have your way, Lord. Let your will be done. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, man. So, uh, welcome to the Say Yes Podcast. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jalen. Right now, I am freezing my butt off. I'm downtown Chicago, and (laughs) y'all, it is cold, bro. It is cold. Like, when I tell you cold, I'm saying it is cold. My hands are on 30,000 right now, but... I'm doing it for the kingdom of heaven, man. You know what I'm saying? Because we stumping on the kingdom of darkness, okay? We stumping on the kingdom of darkness, man. But how y'all day been? How y'all been? I just pray that it's not too noisy out here for y'all because it is Chicago downtown. And it's, you're going to hear a lot of horns and all that type of stuff. So I don't know what that horn was about. But, oh, uh, yeah. So today I want to talk about something that we all struggle with. A lot of times on this podcast, or I say, like, A lot of times that I do film this podcast, it's simply going to be about things that I struggle with personally or that I just know that we as a generation struggle with, you know, all together, Gen Z to be exact. And I know either uh, even older adults struggle with the same thing. But today I want to talk about stop chasing success. And I got my phone now because there's some good notes that I wrote down. But at the end of the day, I'm just allowing God to have his way. So. I'd low key should just put up the phone, but I'm gonna just kind of read off the notes for right now. Uh, a couple things that I've written down that I thought that people need to know. There's two questions on here that I see. Is one, yeah, two questions on here that I seen, and I want to ask you guys this uh, because what we're going to read from is the book of Ecclesiastes. I, I can't say that. Okay, I cannot say. Y'all know what I'm trying to say, man. Um, is it keep it clearly, bro? That is crazy. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. God, if you ever call me to be a pastor, I need to at least be able to say that word first. You feel me? <laughs> this is embarrassing. But yeah, uh, e- 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 lassies or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, we're going to be reading from that word, uh, from that word today. But it was a question in there that I seen that I want to ask you guys. And I want you guys to actually take it into consideration. So the question is. The book of Ecclesiastes is part of Solomon's testimony to what happens when a kingdom or any group of people forget God. As you examine your projects and goals, what is your starting point, your motivation? If if serving, loving, honoring, and glorifying God aren't your key factors and what you are doing, it will be meaningless to you when you reach life's end. And I want you guys to really sit there and ask you guys that, like, ask yourself that question, like, what? why are you doing what you're doing in this life? Why do you want so much money? Why do you want to be so successful? Why do you want these things? You know what I'm saying? Like, if your main goal is not serving, loving, or just glorifying God and whatever it is that you're doing, then it's going to be meaningless. You're going to get to 80 years old, 90 years old, and you're going to realize that all your hard work was just meaningless, bro. Uh, let me go ahead and put this up real quick because I ain't going to lie. Y'all, my hands is freezing right now. I need to warm it up. But let me get my Bible real quick, man, because um, it's a lot of it, – it, it, the book of Ecclesiastes is really good, y'all. It's, it's really good. I'm not going to lie, y'all. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and – Read out the word real quick. Read out the word. So I'm actually gonna read out of um this is so ghetto. I don't have no no uh, bookmarks. I used the gum paper. That was that's trifling, but yeah, so I'm gonna read out of the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, and then I'm gonna give y'all my thoughts and what I what I believe that we all should be uh doing in this life and how we should live our life because it's a lot of things in this in this word that it tells us that a lot of things are meaningless. And it's not to say that you cannot work hard for stuff on this life. Uh, But it's to say that if you're working hard without God, without the love of God, and you're just doing it for your self-serving satisfaction, then you're, it's meaningless. It don't mean nothing. But everything that I do in my life, I do it for the glory of God. So it's actually a scripture in the Bible that says everything you do, whether you eat, drink, or whatever, do it for the glory of God. Everything I do, I'm doing it for the glory of God. This podcast, y'all, I literally, I don't want 
like I don't want this. The reason why I don't want this is because I never want to lead someone astray, and I don't want me to say one word and they run and y'all run with it, and then next thing you know, you know what I'm saying like y'all blood is on my hands, and I don't want that. You feel me? So right here, uh, if I can keep the books, man, my hands is frozen, y'all. I don't know how long I'm gonna stay out here. I might low key just sit in the car and film this because, bro, my hands are like deceased right now. Okay. <laughs> Um, so this is the book of Solomon. I mean, well, this is not the book of Solomon, but this was written by Solomon. If you don't know who Solomon is, Solomon, he had everything, 700 wives, 300 concubines. I mean, the man was, he was, he, he was, he literally had everything that every, that any man ever wanted. You know what I'm saying? So many women, he had all the, the money, the fame, all that. But he got to a point in his life where he realized that he walked outside of the will of God and he realized how meaningless it really was. So this book right here is basically him kind of maturing. And realizing that, dang, everything I worked for was just meaningless. I don't even know why I did what I did because it was all worthless at the end of the day, you know? So, uh, so Ecclesiastes chapter 2, it said, I said to myself, I should have fun. I should enjoy everything as much as I can. But I learned that this is also, that this also, that this is also useless. It is foolish to laugh all the time. Having having fun does not do any good. So I decided to fill my body with wine while I fill my mind with wisdom. I tried with I tried this foolishness because I wanted to find a way to be happy. I wanted to see what was good for people to do during their few days of life. He literally said it right here, y'all. I want to find a way to be happy. And I think that's a lot of people's struggles right now. They want to find a way to be happy, but in reality, man, happiness is just a temporary feeling this is a temporary satisfaction what you should be striving for is joy and how do you get joy by believing in our lord and savior jesus christ and you know when you have the holy spirit in you one of the fruits like it's joy it's joy it's peace it's patience it's kindness it's all these different things you know what i'm saying joy is something we should be striving for because happiness i can be happy for a moment and be mad or sad for the next moment but when i have joy it's like I live my life where if anything was to happen, I still have a level of peace, a level of joy in me because I have God in my life. And that's what we all should be striving for is joy. But Solomon, he decided to want to strive for happiness, satisfaction. He wanted to strive for things outside the will of God. And that's what we all fall short of is we always want to strive for the things outside the will of God instead of striving for the things by believing in God and trusting in him and trusting that whatever it is that he wants us to do. He's going to provide the finances. He's going to be provide all the resources that we need in order to to um, in order to live the live out the purpose that he has for us. I'm sorry, y'all. I just stutter like crazy. I can't concentrate, man. My hands are like I'm literally having frostbites right now. Okay, I don't know what made me decide to do this, but we're gonna stay out here because it's for the kingdom of God. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and if we continue to read right here, um, it say. Does hard work bring happiness? Then I began doing great things. I built houses and I planted vineyards for myself. I planted gardens and I made parks. I planted all kinds of fruit trees. I made pools of water for myself and I used and I used them. I used them to water my growing trees. I bought men and women slaves and there were slaves born in my house. I owned many great things. I had her I had herds of cattle and flocks of sheep. I owned more things than any person in Jerusalem ever did. So right, so right there, and I'm gonna just stop right there for a minute because I just want to warm up my hands real quick. <laughs> but right there, Solomon said that he had everything, bro. He had everything, and I'm not gonna read the entire chapter because obviously that chapter is pretty lengthy. But I definitely recommend y'all to go read Ecclesiastes uh, chapter two, and y'all can keep on going because it's more it's more wisdom inside that story right there. And as we know, that it's a lot of uh, wisdom inside the Book of Proverbs also, and that was also written by Solomon. So. The thing that I want to talk about today is because we need to stop chasing success. And what I mean by that is that it's okay to have money. It's okay to grind. It's okay to do these things. But in this generation, we put all that before God. We grind in our bus off, but we don't have the Holy Spirit. We grind in our bus off, but we don't even have God. You know what I'm saying? And that's the problem right there. And then y'all wonder why y'all feel so empty. Y'all wonder why when things don't go y'all way, y'all like, man, I got to figure out a new way. I got to figure out a new way. Whatever God placed on your heart to do in the first place, whatever God told you to do to begin with, you should do that. Stop adding extra stuff to what God's plan was already uh, meant for you. 
You know what I'm saying? We don't need to add extra plans to what God already had for our life. God made plans for our life already. He said, I knew the plans that I uh, I knew you before I formed you in your mother, uh, mother womb. I have plans to prosper in your life. I have plans that's not going to harm you, that's not going to fail you. God has a plan for you. And with that plan God placed in you. And whatever that plan is, go after that plan. But you got to go after that plan with God on your side. You know what I'm saying? Because the moment you try to chase that plan without God, it's like, it's, it's going to seem worthless. It's going to seem meaningless. Why are you doing what you're doing? And that's why I asked that question in the beginning. Why do you do the things you do on this earth? Do you do it for your own glorification, for your own satisfaction, or do you do it because you truly love God? And if you truly love God, then you will know that, okay, I'm going to do everything that everything that I have right now is from him. And everything that I do, I'm going to do it because he has placed it on my heart to do it. And I'm doing it for his glorification, his satisfaction. Not because I want to do these things to get money or fame or views or clout. Stop it. We as a generation need to understand that it's more to this life than just money and fame and everything like that. And I and I come to the question where I ask you guys, what is the purpose of life? I mean, seriously, what is the purpose of life? If Solomon even said to himself that he had all them things and all them things was worthless, all them things was meaningless. So then what is the true purpose of life then? The true purpose of life is to fear God. The true purpose of life is to get back right with God. Because Adam and Eve strayed away from God, which caused us to fall short into sin, which caused all humanity to sin, to be sin, to be sinful, should I say. It caused all humanity to do that. So now we got to get back right with God. And how do you get back right with God? You believe in his son, Jesus Christ. You believe in his son, Jesus Christ, who he sent to down the cross for our sins. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of us, we don't care for that. A lot of us just care for the, the temporary satisfaction now. A lot of us just care for the things of this world now. We don't care about nothing else but money cars fame clothes we want to we want to have the what the next person have and that's not what we should be striving for it's not we shouldn't be striving for what the next person have because whatever the next person have we can also retain we can also get we can also get but if it's not in god's will for you then what are you gonna be mad at god because you don't have the nicest car because you don't have the the new gucci the new prada because you don't have those things for what you're gonna get mad at god a lot of things in our life, bro, we don't have because we're not ready for it. That's just the whole thing of it. A lot of things in our life we don't have because we're not ready for it. God cannot bless you with more if you're not even grateful for what he has already given you. We have to understand that if God wanted us to have a million dollars, he would give us that. If God wanted us to have a hundred thousand, two million, three million, four million, fifty million, if God wanted us to have that, he would give it to us. You know what I'm saying? But those people that have that type of money, some of them don't even have God in their life. So when they lose all that money, guess what? Now they're empty. They're empty because they never had the Holy Spirit. And when you lose all that stuff, when you have God in your life and you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, guess what you have? Peace. At least I still have God. I may have lost my car, but at least I still got God. I may have lost all my money, but at least I still got God. I have God in my life. I have God in my life. And I know these people at this penthouse is looking at me crazy because I'm talking to a camera. But I don't care. I don't care. They need to hear the word of God also. They need to hear the truth. They need to hear this this truth. They need to. I think we all struggle with that, bro. Like, I find myself sometimes so worried about my money. I find myself sometimes so worried about what's to come. It's a scripture in the Bible where, where God tells us, he said, don't worry about tomorrow. For today have his own problems. We so worried about the future. God has our future in his hands. At the end of the day, we don't need to be worried about the future. We don't need to be worried about the things to come. God has everything under control. God has everything under control, y'all. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to chase success and chase money and chase fame. We don't need to chase none of that. We don't need to. Everything that we have, he will give. Every order, I say, everything that he has, everything that we have, all we need is him. That's all we need. We don't need nothing else but him. We don't need nothing else but him. That's all we need. And a lot of people don't understand this, but it's the truth. It is the truth. I want y'all to try something. Try to go outside and get everything that you ever dreamed of. Try to go outside and get the car and get the fame and try to work your butt off 24-7 out of the day. Try to work all that. Try to work all that and see where you go. See where you go, especially if you do it without the work, without uh, uh, the will of God. If you do it outside the will of God, please tell me how far you get in life. Please tell me how you may feel afterwards after you retain all of that. Let me know how you may feel. Because I know that why you think of so many celebrities killing themselves? They're killing themselves because they're empty, because they don't have God. That's why. Because they don't have God. When you don't have God, you're going to start doing things that 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 is just wasn't meant for you to do. 
You're going to start doing them things. That's why so many celebrities kill themselves. They hurt. They painful. They don't, they don't know their purpose in life. All they know is money, cars, fame. That's all they know. That's all they know. And that's all they will ever know if they don't come to God. Now that my hands is kind of warmed up, I'm going to go ahead and read <laughs> a few more chapters. <laughs> bro, my hands was, bro, my hands was freezing. I should have asked that man that just came out like, hey, man, what's the purpose of life? Since we on this topic, you know what I'm saying? Should have gone ahead and evangelized someone out here. Bro, come on. Come on. Don't, don't do me like that, Wen. All right. So. The next one right here. So after after Solomon retained everything, he gathered everything, everything like that. He did all that. And right here it say, then I decided to think about what it means to be wise or to be foolish. Now, if you know, God asked Solomon, what do he want? And the man Solomon could have everything. He could have anything, but he asked for wisdom. You know what I'm saying? He's a smart guy. He's a smart guy. Um, then I decided what it means to be wise or to be foolish or to do crazy things. And I thought about the one who will do, who will be the next king, the new king will do the same as the kings before him. I saw that wisdom is better, uh, better than foolish, better than foolishness in the same way that light is better than darkness. Wise people use their minds like eyes to see where they are going. But for fools, it is as if they are, they walking in the dark. I also saw that fools and wise people both end the same way. I thought to myself, the same thing that happens to a fool also happened to me. So why have I tried so hard to become wise? I said to myself, being wise is also is also useless. Whether people are wise or foolish, they will still die. Man, look, Solomon talking that stuff. Solomon is truly talking that stuff because at the end of the day, we all go die. It don't matter how much you have in this life. You're going to die. You have a birth date and you have an expiration date. You know what I'm saying? Like I said before, y'all, it's okay to go after these things. All I'm saying is that you cannot retain these things or you can retain them. Yes, you can. You can, you can have whatever you want on this earth. But it doesn't feel right when you don't have it. When you ha it don't feel right when you don't have it, knowing that you have God also. You know what I'm saying? I can have everything, but if I don't got God, I don't feel like nothing. I feel worthless. It's all meaningless at the end of the day. So the thing I wanted to leave y'all with is stop chasing things. Stop chasing after the fame. Stop chasing after the stage. I heard this one, um, this one podcast, Alex Wisdom. I love him so much. He said it the best. He said. Jesus never chased after the stage, so why are we chasing after the stage? I uh, let me see if this thing real still recording. I'm just talking, y'all. Man, y'all, I'm so man, I'm so cold. Y'all don't understand. Okay, it is. You know, we, we still in business. We still in business. <laughs> you hear me? But no, all just aside though, like Jesus didn't chase after the stage, so why are we chasing after the stage? Why are we chasing after the things of this world, man? We need to really stop. We need to truly stop chasing after things of this world. And realize that if Jesus didn't chase after it, then we should we should not chase after it. You know what I'm saying? We shouldn't chase after the things that Jesus didn't chase after because he is our example. He is our example of what it means to truly follow after God and what it means to truly obey his father. He is the right example. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? So my thing or my advice to anybody out there that's worrying about where they're going to be in the future. I know that in this generation, we see everybody having all this nice stuff. You know what I'm saying, bro? I'm downtown Chicago right now. Look around me, bro. Look around me. These are penthouses. Fam, do you know how much this stuff costs? It's like $2,000, $4,000 for rent. And guess where I stay? I'm not going to tell y'all where I stay, but just know that I stay somewhere else. And it's not downtown Chicago. <laughs> I, stay, I stay freaking an hour away from downtown Chicago. You know what I'm saying? But again, my point that I'm making is that this stuff is all worthless, y'all. We see all this stuff and we be like, man, they so successful. I know they got to be successful paying $4,000 a month. They, they got to make at least $10,000 a, a month then. To be paying $4,000 a month for rent, they got to be making at least $10,000. You know what I'm saying? But again, I don't care what the next person have. If they don't have the Holy Spirit, then they don't have nothing. If they don't have God, they don't have nothing. If they don't know Jesus Christ, they don't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? They can be the wisest person on this earth, but if they missing Jesus, then guess what? They don't know anything, anything whatsoever because they missing Jesus Christ. They don't know Jesus Christ. I love y'all truly, bro. And I just really hope that a lot of y'all hear me, man. Listen to me, bro. 
It's real. You know what I'm saying? Don't be chasing after everything on this earth, man. If God placed it on your heart to have a business, just know that he going to provide those resources. You ain't got to chase after every single thing. Just do what God told you to do the first time. Do what God told you to do the first time. If God told you to start a podcast, do the podcast. If God told you to start music, do the music. Stop adding extra stuff because you're not seeing the results of what God told you to do. But you're not seeing the results because you're not truly going after it with God. You're trying to go after it without him. Come on, man. God speaking through me, man. I, I got to walk away on that because God is truly speaking right now. But he also speaking to me. I love y'all, man. I truly love y'all. You know what I'm saying? I, I stayed out here for a couple minutes, 30 minutes probably. <laughs> but I truly love y'all, bro. Um, I just want I just want y'all to truly understand that it's worthless chasing after these worthless things. You don't need to chase after the stuff, man. All the stuff is worthless at the end of the day. All of it is worthless. It's a car pulling up, y'all. And I, I, I look, you want to ask them, like, what's the purpose of life? And I hope, never mind, she exited. it. <laughs> look, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> she exited. <laughs> she went to the exit, bro. Look, man, look, see the devil. He done, he done seen me. He was like, oh, snap. Oh, snap. That's a follower of Jesus. No, 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 no. Had to get out of here expeditiously, man. But yeah, y'all, um, it was actually another question on here that I wanted to ask you guys, too. Um, it's, it's our goal to search the meaning of God. You know what I'm saying? Actually, I don't even think, wait, hold on. What's that question? I think it's, it's our goal to search the, uh, for the meaning of God or who is the giver of all meaning. Yes. That's a true question. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to read that one more time because I kind of started over that. But the question is, is our goal to search for the, uh, for meaning or God who is the giver of all meaning? That That's the that's the question. And that, that's another question I want to ask you guys. Like, what are you really searching for? You know what I'm saying? We all try to search for the meaning of life. God is the give God is the giver of all that. You know what I'm saying? God is the giver of all that. He's going to show you what it is that he wants you specifically to do. Stop chasing what other people what other people are chasing after cuz what somebody else is doing may not work for you because it's not what God told you to do. Come on, man. Let's be real. And then you know what's crazy? It's another story and I know I said I'm going to let y'all go, but look, hear me out. It's another story in the Bible, Job. Job had everything, y'all. Job had everything, but look what happened when he lost everything. He had God still. That's what I mean by you can have everything, but if you don't have God, Solomon had everything, but he walked outside the will of God. So look what happened. He, and furthermore, in that chapter, he said, I start to hate life. That's what Solomon said furthermore in that chapter. You know what I'm saying? But look at Job. He had everything, but he also had God while he had everything. And the first thing that he was doing was he was praying, putting his face before God, getting on his knees before God, praying. That's what we need to do, man. He had God still. So when he lost everything, he probably was stressed. He probably was hurt. But I bet and I guarantee he still had peace in the midst of his storm. I guarantee he probably still had peace in the midst of his storm. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, he probably definitely was hurt about it. He probably was hurt about it. But he still had God in the midst of all of that. All that he had, he still had God. I truly love y'all, man. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know what I'm saying? A little podcast. I'm trying to get out more and do different things. Uh, trying to get myself ready, y'all, because I want to start evangelizing to people. Um, I want to I want to see, I want to, like, ask this guy right here. He's, like, right here, but I kind of don't know, y'all. Uh, I want to really ask him, like, what's the meaning of life? I don't know, man. We out here by ourselves. He might try to throw me over the bridge. But <laughs> let me stop, man. Let me stop. Um, but, yeah, man, I truly just hope that you guys enjoy this video, man. Um, enjoy this podcast. If you are on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, go ahead and rate it. If you are on YouTube, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. And, you know what I'm saying, we are coming back again for uh, next week for uh, episode three or season one of the Say Yes podcast. So, yeah, I love y'all, man. And God bless y'all. Let me just uh, pray out real quick for y'all, man. So, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time, Father God. I just pray that everyone who's watching this video, Father God, even myself included, Lord, every time I do this podcast, it's never meant, it's always meant for the, the, the others, but it's also meant for myself, Lord, because I know that I still struggle and I'm not perfect, Lord. So, Lord, I just ask that you just continue to use us, Lord, as vessels for your kingdom. Father God, just give us the desires of your heart, Father God. We're tired of chasing after the things of this world without you on our side, Lord. So, if you want us to do something, Lord, provide the resources, provide everything that we need to be able to go full force after what it is that you're calling us to do, Lord. We truly love you and honor you, Father God, for everything, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. 
Uh, yeah, man. So I truly love y'all, man. And I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And yeah, it's been your boy, The Pen. Whoa, whoa, hold on. It, it is not your boy, The Pen. I do not have that channel no more. Oh, snap. Woo, now let me stop, bro. I'm trolling right now. But yeah, man, it's me, your boy, Jalen. And this was the Say Yes Podcast. I love y'all, man. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace. <laughs>